Good day everyone and welcome back to the start of the biggest, the goriest and the most awesome SCP I have covered so far. It's the big one, what happened to Site-13. I'm covering the entire SCP with an in-depth explanation at the end, just like with my SCP-5000 series. So sit back and strap yourselves in. A thank you to the amazing council and administrators and let's get started. The following is the SCP-1730 data file as it appeared before its reclassification as neutralized. Some inconsistencies may persist. Description SCP-1730 is a large complex of structures 15 kilometers northwest of the US-Mexico border within Big Bend Ranch State Park that was discovered on June 5th. Due to the isolated nature of the complex and the low survival rate of individuals who come in contact with it, it is possible that SCP-1730 had been previously discovered but unreported. SCP-1730 bears identifying markings and contains documents to support the claim that SCP-1730 was at one point Foundation Site-13, originally located near Nome, Alaska. This conflicts with current records which show that Site-13 was a project that while intended to be constructed in Nome, was scrapped for the larger and more advanced Site-19 and never completed. Flora located on site have been tracked back to those native to the Alaskan region. How SCP-1730 came to be at its current location is unknown. SCP-1730 is in a severe state of disrepair and appears to have been left abandoned for an extended period of time. The site power generator has continued to operate in a damaged state despite a number of fuel leaks and fires throughout the facility. This has resulted in intermittent power failures throughout the site, hindering exploration and rescue efforts. The origin of SCP-1730 is unknown, as is the nature of many of the anomalous entities contained within. It is confirmed that the 2nd through 15th basement levels were utilized for entity containment, though the state of that containment has deteriorated significantly. It is believed that a contingent of human survivors exists somewhere deep in the lower basement levels of the facility. Messages written in English have been discovered throughout the site, consisting of warnings such as danger and death here, and other messages such as not my body and bleed. A recurring message, what happened to Site-13, has been found in several different locations in the basements. Several logs of data have been collected by the remaining functional site terminals, the relevant data of which is contained in the attached addendums. Worth noting is that inconsistencies exist between the logs and what has been determined through exploration, including site layout, staff makeup, and contained anomalies. Special Containment Procedures A circular perimeter has been established 2 km from SCP-1730, and a quarantine zone has been established 1 km from SCP-1730. Personnel who are to enter SCP-1730 must first undergo Class 7 hazardous contact preparation measures, including the application of a modified Maxwell Harden hazardous material reinforced airtight suit. The application of these protective measures may only take place at the provisional Site-23 quarantine main gate. Individuals attempting to exit the quarantined area must first submit to thorough decontamination protocols as administered by the quarantine security staff. Individuals failing to meet the quarantine extraction parameters are to be held for further decontamination, or, in the event decontamination becomes unfeasible, termination. Addendum 1731 Recovered Log Team Charlie Yukon, Assignment Site 13 Recovery, Lead CY1. Begin log. We found it. Watched it kill Daly earlier. Crawled right into his mouth, and next thing you know, Daly's got blood leaking out of his ears. Puking it up, shitting it out everywhere. Blood looked funny, too. Too dark. It was running out of his hair, like through the follicles. His hair fell out right with it. Once it was over, the thing that crawled inside him crawled back out with a buddy. One of them, can't say which, drinks up all this blood like a leech. The other one crawls back inside daily and he stands up. Turns around, starts coming at us. I can see that thing inside him when he opens his mouth. So I put a bullet in his face. We emptied our magazines into him. He did get up after that. We're not going to be too much longer, though. Found another one of those messages down here, you know. Just a matter of time before it starts. We strapped some C4 to it and blew the wall, and I think it's pretty illegible at this point. But it doesn't matter. 
Jones already went quiet like the others. We shoved him down an elevator shaft earlier. Didn't hear the body hit the ground. I think I just heard him start up Thresher. I wish we would have known about that sooner. Oh well. Addendum 1732 recovered automated message. The following message was recovered from SCP-1730's emergency warning system. Logs on file indicate that it was transmitted moments prior to a major electrical disturbance and three minutes before an explosion within the site power relay. General notice. Site 13 has experienced a gross breach of containment systems. It has breached containment during testing. On-site nuclear device is non-responsive. Thresher protocol has been activated. Life support systems, online. Electrical systems, offline. Fire control systems, offline. Flood control systems, offline. Reactor status, critical. Euclid class containment status, critical. Keter class containment status, compromised. Addendum 1733, Exploration Log Transcripts Log 1. Date. Exploration Team, Mobile Task Force D-12 Mudslingers. Team Lead, D-12 Captain. Team Members, D-12-1 to D-12-5. Begin Log. Recorders on. Everybody check your mics. Check. 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 Check, check. And check makes five. Right. Come on, do you hear us clear? Roger that, Team Lead. All right, we're set. Keep weapons locked. No idea what we're going to see in there. Let's move in. Those doors. The team moves into the main SCP-1730 structure through the front doors. The doors are found to be unlocked. Keep your eyes open. Dark in here. Switching lights. Good call. The team switches on their shoulder-mounted lights. Something written on the wall over here. Yeah, here too. What you got? Get below and... Don't look at the walls next to it. A little late for that. What about you two? What did we do? You see that command? Yes. All right, let's move on out. Service elevator over there. Five, check if it has power. Yeah, this will work. Let's see how far it'll take us then. The team enters the service elevator. Video indicates lit control panel with various floor buttons. The captain hits a button labelled B3. The elevator descends briefly. It stops upon reaching the third basement level. The door opens to reveal a dark hallway. A single light is on at a bend in the hall roughly 50 metres from the elevator. Okay, let's clear this level first, then we can go from there. One and three take that hallway there, myself and four can check the rooms in this hallway. And two and five, stay here. Make sure our elevator sticks around. The team splits up. D-12-1 and 3 move towards the light at the end of the hallway. The captain begins checking the rooms on the left side of the hallway. D-12-4 checks the right side. Rooms are filthy. What is this? Yeah, I see it too. Is it mud? Feels like it. Some kind of sludge. Smells metallic. I'll send this back up, Site Command. Let you guys poke around in it. Acknowledged. Try and keep out of it as much as you can. Until we figure out what it is. Sure thing. We're at the end of this hallway. Another hallway here. Looks like there's some kind of barricade at the end. Bunch of tables and desks all piled up. Can you approach the barricade, one? D-12-1 and 3 approach the barricade. More of the sludge in this room. Caked on the walls and found a body. Hang tight. One, don't move. I'm coming for... The captain enters the room. A visible humanoid body is seen half-submerged in the thick black material in a corner. The head and neck are not visible. Yep. Any kind of identification? He's got a spot on his belt for a badge, but it's... missing. Looks pulled off. Maybe to unlock a door somewhere? Maybe. Go ahead and proceed, one. Aye. Cap, more bodies here. That sludge is all over the back of this barricade. Shit, that one moved! There's something else in this pile. Get a light on it. Moving your way, guys. But uh, there, fuck! Report, guys. We're getting to you. Thing crawled out of one of their mouths. Some kind of snake, I think. A lot of teeth. Can't really tell what it is now. Look here! You hit that body. See that? Fuck! It's hollow. 
the captain and D-12-4 arrive at the barricade. You see in this command? Affirmative. All right, watch for that then, I guess. Weapons hot, if they aren't already. Aye, aye. Let's head back to the elevator, see if we can get down to the next level. Is that door in... Yeah, I thought so. Let's just do that then. The captain, D-12-1, 3 and 4, move back down the hallway. Wait a second. Didn't this turn left earlier? Sure did. Where's the elevator? 2-5, you read me? 2-5, you read me? Uh, here we go. Shut it. Alright, shit. Come on, you read us. Sure do, Captain. You got a read on 2 and 5? Should be about 45 meters to your 12. There's a wall here. Looks like it's always been here. Either we're hallucinating or the building is doing something fucky either way. Can you get a hold of either of them? Hey, moment. Site Command attempts to communicate with D-12-2 and 5, neither of whom are responsive. No go. Ugh, shit. Let's find a way up and get out of here then. The D-12 team proceeds down a hallway. The hallway is much longer than any on any recovered schematic of the site. Got something else on this door. What's that? It says silence. We trying to check this? Is this a containment cell? That's just an office door. This whole floor just looks like offices. Alright then, get in there. D-12-1 attempts to open the door. It's locked. I can't get it open. Knock the door down then. You hear that? One. Two. It sounds like somebody's shushing. Three. D-12-1 kicks the door down. The video records three frames of a naked human with what appears to be fire burning out of their ears, staring fearfully at the door. Fuck! There is an intense white light and the sound of searing meat. All camera lenses are damaged and become non-functional. All microphones except for that of D-12-3 stop working. What happened? Captain. D-12 team. Site Command attempts to communicate with the team captain for an additional 30 seconds before realising that D-12-3's mic is still operational. D-12-3, can you hear us? D-12-3. D-12-3? A cry is heard, then the sound of choking. This continues for 43 seconds, and then the sound of liquid leaking, then pouring, accompanied by the sound of vomit is heard. Large, wet objects can be overheard hitting the floor. A dull, low, approaching sound accompanies this. D-12-3's mic cuts out suddenly. D-12-3. Shit. Side command. Jesus Christ. What? D-12-2? Where are you right now? By the elevator. We assumed our radios had stopped working down here. We're just waiting for them to get back. The rest of the team is compromised. Hang on. We're trying to establish a link to your video. No need for that. It's probably just interference. Can you set the team down here to get us? Hang on. Video coming up. Don't. Got it. You? Mounted cameras on both individuals do not show the hallway they had been standing in, but what looks like a large utility room. Boilers are visible in the near distance, and a wall appears to have been caved in. D-12-2 appears to be hanging upside down facing D-12-5, both of whom are stark white and unmoving. Their faces are covered in blood that looks to have originated from their mouth, nostrils and eyes. A large object is seen moving quickly behind D-12-2, accompanied by the sound of slithering from many different sources. D-12-5 opens his eyes. Two frames later, the video and audio feed cuts out. No additional responses are picked up from the D-12 team. End log. Addendum 1733, Exploration Log Transcript Log 3. Date. Exploration Team, Mobile Task Force Y-24, Gulliver's Travelers. Team Lead, Y-24 Captain. Team Members, Y-24-1, Y-24-2. Notes. Initial exploration of the main site structure proved too dangerous for an additional attempt without additional resources. The only remaining mobile task force on hand was Mobile Task Force Y-24, a three-person team who was charged with entering the site power station and assessing the damage. Begin log. Coming online. The video and audio feed for all three members comes online simultaneously. Ahead of them is the entrance to the SCP-1730 power station. You can hear us? Affirmative. Good. Anything else we should know? Thermal scans read one of the cores is being superheated. Might be on the verge of an explosion. Stay as far away from them as you can. 
You can use the micro drones if you need to. Don't worry about trying to get them back. Right. Okay, good. Let's get on. The team enters the power station. The first room appears to be a security station. There's a first problem. Doors are locked. These are pretty solid, too. Is that glass bulletproof? Check it. Guess that answers that. Command, are we cleared to use explosives in here? Negative. Structure is pretty weak all over. You'll risk caving yourself in. Well, shit. There's no other way in. Hang on. We have anybody on site with a level 4 clearance card? One that can override breach lockdowns? Dr. Edwards is with a team over at the containment bay. No, no, it would have to be somebody older. Edwards has only been around, like, what, 10 years? Somebody who has had the clearance for a long time. Stand by. Director Jameson is currently on assignment at Site 65. Eh, it's three hours from here. We want- No, you've got the right idea. Get Director Jameson on the phone, Command. Ask him what his clearance code was in, uh, when was Site 19 built? 1960? Stand by. Ten minutes pass. The extraneous logs have been removed. All right. You ready? Go ahead. Well, I'll be damned. Hello, Researcher Jameson. We look at that. We'll send the director your regards. Please do. Good work, one. Let's get in here. The team enters the power station main concourse. Can you see the damaged core? No, they all look fine. Let's switch to the thermal lens. There it is. Are you missing something? The core looks fine. We need to get closer to it, guys. Right. Releasing micro drone command. Y-242 removes a micro drone from his pack and releases it. The drone approaches the power station cores and begins to circle them. Twelve cores are accounted for. Seven of them damaged beyond repair. Three have not been brought up to power, and two are operating at full capacity. One of the two is the superheated core, which aside from its abnormal temperature, shows no other sign of damage. It looks fine. Can you get closer to that, Captain? Sure. The team approaches the superheated core. Temperature readings begin to rise as they get closer. It's hot enough anyway. What's this shit? It's really thick. Is that sludge? Some kind of waste? Try and avoid that, team. Captain, can you get a vial of it on the micro-drone and send it back out the way you came? Yeah, hang on. Two, uh, grab one of... Yeah, you got it. Samples on the way, Command. Thanks. Be careful, guys. Try and get around to the other side of it. I'm over here. The thing looks... Ugh, fuck. Look. Jesus. Y-241's camera shows no fewer than ten human bodies bound to the side of the superheated core with wire. All of the bodies appear similarly to the bodies found by the D-12 team. Stark white, blood leaking from all orifices, non-responsive. Something written underneath them. Is that blood? What happened to Site 13? These lines don't run to the main structure. See here? They're running below us. Any kind of identifier? Let me see. Yep. They're all labeled body pit. They run straight into the ground over there. Looks like we're going below then. Command, you copy all that? We do. Just received your sample back as well. Going to get a report on that in just a few minutes. All right, good. Let's get down there. There's a stairwell over here. The team approaches the stairwell and begins to descend. These doors are all hard locked. The team descends to the bottom of the stairwell. The door there is open. This has been pried open. Looks like somebody was trying to get... Out? Not in. Something else is written on the wall here. Fuck SCP. That's polite. You smell that? Fuck. Yeah. It's disgusting. What is it? Whatever's on the other end of this hall, I'd imagine. Watch the blown radiator here, guys. Team, take note that we are losing video feed. Something's interfering with our signal here. Roger that. Audio feed cuts out. Positioning system stays active for a few more moments as Site Command attempts to reconnect with the team. Intermittent communications are received for an additional 15 minutes. Some of these are shoot. That same... It's all over the inside. That black shit smells like iron. Something crawled out. Do you hear? We need to get... There's a light over there. Can you see? Hello? Are you okay? Do you need help? We can... 
Audio cuts completely. Recovery efforts are halted. No communications are received from the Y24 team for an additional 24 hours, after which the team is determined to be lost. The sample that was returned with the microdrone is revealed to be blood and power core residual runoff, mixed with some kind of additional biological matter. Study into the substance is ongoing. After one week, Y241's video feed becomes active again for 13 seconds. No audio is transmitted, and the video shows a group of humans standing around and looking down at a table. One of the humans turns to look at the camera, and the video cuts. No additional communications are received from the team at any point afterward. End log. And that concludes part one of SCP-1730. I really hope you enjoyed this video, and be sure to like and subscribe if you did. A massive thank you to all the incredible people who helped out for this one. We had Exploring Series, Eastside Steve, Tanner, and a few of my amazing patrons. All the links can be found below. Please show them all some love. Again, massive thanks to all the amazing patrons who keep the channel going. Please consider joining them. And thank you to Rick Trexon, Generals Alert, Wings of a Meme, Big Mac, Nicholas, Number of the Yeast, Wunderschnell, Splendy the Tear God, The Lav, Miss Talon Caro, Razman, Starlight Robe, Ken, Guardian of Energy, and Luna Wilson. Big thanks to the council members, Arctoast, Kibara, Captain Core, Hunter Killer, Catclone, Tree, Little Sub, Monarch, Kickeran, Gamaton, Deep Dark Pain, and your local fishermen. And huge thanks to the administrators, Viger, Kamana, Panzer, Techno Ninja, Sonic, GFHD, and Man Mana. Thank you all for watching. I will see you all soon. And take care.